Hello, I'm Johnny, um, and welcome to today's episode of Greyfriars Lent series, where we're looking at this book here, Looking Through the Cross by Graham Tomlin. So today's reading comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11, and reads like this. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, being obedient to death and even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So for me, the um, actions of Christ here form the very basis of the Christian message. The situation here is is madness. It's completely scandalously paradoxical. Here is Jesus, the God, the creator of heaven and earth. And he chooses to come down, to live life as a human, to become one of us, enter into our mess. And not only that, but to die a humiliating death, a painful death, all for the sake of us who, as humans in creation, had turned away from him had decided that we didn't want to follow his way and had shown little inclination to turn back. And so, for me, the passage highlights two of the most amazing characteristics of God. I think, firstly, it highlights his unconditional love. God came down. He took on flesh. He was willing to humble himself, to to live amongst us. He entered into our brokenness and died for our sins. He didn't care whether we deserved it or not. Whether, we've, whether we'd lived good lives or not, and whether we were willing to come back to him or not. He did it whilst we were broken, as a mad act of grace, of unimaginable kindness. And that just really illustrates the way in which God loves us and God sees us. That it doesn't matter how far we've come or whether we turn back to him, he's still there, and he's still willing to make the journey and move the distance for us. I think secondly, it provides a great paradigm of how we as Christians can try to love others. I think one of the most amazing things about what Jesus did there is that his love was so sacrificial. It wasn't based on an economic cost-benefit model. He wasn't looking for anything in return. He just had this sensational love for us and a desire to reconcile himself with us in creation. And I think it gives us a great model in our Christian life of how we can interact with others as we strive to show the same kindness, to love in the same way and to show the same sacrificial love that Christ showed to us. So what does that mean for us as people living in the 21st century in Reading or wherever in the world we might be? I think it, it, means, it means this thing mainly, and it, it acts as a challenge. It gives us something to look to, something to aim for, that in our life and in how we relate with others, we might show something of Christ's love and Christ's sacrifice. And I think it's important to act in that way, not out of guilt or a sense of obligation, but in an act of thankfulness that we recognise what God has done for us and that we try to mirror that in our lives and how we live. So let's close in prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the cross and for the sacrifice that you made there. I thank you that when we are still sinners, Lord, that you, you didn't care, that you came for us, that you came to make us whole and to bring us back into a relationship with you. And I pray that as we move on with our lives, Lord, today and over the next weeks and months, that it lead us in positive ways and help us to show some of that love to others as we follow you.